Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's myself, Paul Neal, and I'm delighted to be joined by St. Mirren midfielder Jamie McGrath. He's joining me. He has a lovely shiner on his eyes, you can see there. I was not expecting that when he turned up on the call. We did have a little bit of a technical difficulty starting off, and then he popped out with the eye. Jamie, what happened to you? Hiya, Paul. Um, yeah, uh, two nights ago, I uh, just picked up a little uh, elbow on the on the, on the the eye there, so... Makeup is looking well for this today, but um, nah, little sore one, but um, yeah, it's alright. Just another day in the life of a footballer, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. Bumps and bruises all over the shop. Um, wouldn't have it any other way, but um, yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah, well, you're on form, or really on fire at the moment, and I said I get you on. Um, I suppose it's it's well overdue, but um, I was gonna take you back to just before your move to Saint Mirren, obviously. You went from Dundalk, and at the time Dundalk were absolutely flying. You know, you pretty much won everything by the FAI Cup. Um, but this season, I suppose things didn't go as well as probably with planned, and then COVID and everything else came into the equation. But um, did you kind of expect things to kind of go as they did? Because for me, at the start of the season, I was looking at it. I never would have expected Dundalk to go the way they were. Such a crazy season in terms of where they finished up in the league and obviously getting into the Europa League. Yeah, it was it was a crazy season. Um yeah, I was keeping up to date with um nearly every match. Um I availed of that watch League of Ireland, which I thought was a very uh, good service, but it's a shame it's not been continued this year. But um no any chance I got to watch the lads, I watched them and um yeah it was a tricky year. Obviously it was a lot of stop starts. Um it's always gonna be a hindrance and um not to be fair to Shamrock Rovers they were they were unbelievable last year. Um yeah I thought they played some unbelievable football and the quality they have as well is uh is very good. But um yeah Dundalk obviously they had a great season in Europe. Um to get to the group stages is something that's incredible like so um now it was a mixed mixed season for them but um I think if you said to the lads it'd be playing in the group stages of the Europa League they would have took it so um now it was it was great watching them and watching them play in Europe and they played some great football there and um they didn't go there with any inferior mindset. They went out and played their own game and they played out from the back every time they did and yeah, I thought they were a joy to watch. Yeah, and some of the goals as well that were scored, like unbelievable and um between, you know, Jordan Flores and David McMillan. Um, it must have been mad though as well, kind of watching it because I even when I was like, Oh my god, like in the Aviva Stadium and all that, it must have taken you right back. Yeah, the only thing was, I was watching it and I was even watching the game where they got into the group stages and just the fact there was no fans there, it was just uh, put a bit of a tint on it. But um, yeah, to play in front of a packed Emirates or that it would have been inc incredible. But it's just a shame the lads didn't get to have that experience. But nonetheless, playing in the Emirates, whether it be full or empty, it's still, uh, say it was still a great day for the boys. And um, nah, they, Like I said, I thought they played very well in Europe and Fair play to them. Um, I thought they'd probably deserve a few more points than they got. Yeah, I, I felt as though against uh, Molde and um, who was the other team that uh, got out of my head there? Uh, Rapid Vienna, wasn't it? Yeah, Vienna, yeah. Yeah, so I think they, I think they were unlucky in a couple of those games. But um, just you, you mentioned fans there and stuff like that. It must be nice still that you know, usually when a lot of players leave clubs, they don't really get you know recognition or, or nice thoughts. But I, I do believe you know a lot of Dundalk fans still really have you know nice things to say about you and stuff, and, and really wish you well since you've gone to Saint Mirren. Now we will come to that now in a sec. Yeah. Um... Every week on Twitter, I see uh, some lovely messages from the fans, and it's great to to know that they uh, they're still uh, supporting me and following me, which is great. And um, I'm similar with Dundalk; like I still follow them. And um, yeah, like I said, just before lockdown, I was watching, or just after lockdown, I was watching their matches on Match LOI, and um, I said it's just a pity that that service isn't going ahead this year. I actually read a couple of things online earlier on that there may be an announcement in the next few days regarding the broadcast service. So uh, don't okay. rule out just yet, but don't actually quote me on that either. I, don't. <laughs> I hope uh, it comes through, but I've seen it from a couple of reliable sources that there will be some sort of uh, streaming service. So hopefully that yeah. is the case, But uh, and you can still watch then from, from Scotland. Yeah. But um, talk me about the move to St. Mir and how that came about. I suppose there was eyebrows raised when you, when you first went there. And kind of how you've answered that? 
Yeah, I think when I first moved, it was a bit of a shock to maybe a few people. Um, obviously, we were just off the back of an unbelievable season with Dundalk. We were just a pen shoot shootout away from winning literally every uh, tournament we could have won, every cup we could have won. So um, I felt it was a good time maybe to just try something new. Um, I was there for three years and it was three of the best years I've had um, in football and met some unbelievable people, shared a great dressing room with so many great players and personalities. So, um, yeah, I was coming to the age where I thought I needed a new challenge. Um, I'd just gone 23, so I thought it was a great opportunity to try something new. And I did have maybe a few offers down south or that, but um, personally, I thought that this was probably going to be the best move for me. Um, at that current time, um, I was chatting to the gaffer and he made it clear that he really wanted me and he seen that I'd be playing week in, week out. And that was something that really appealed to me. I didn't want to go somewhere and waste a year somewhere, um, waste a year of your development. I wanted to just keep developing and I thought that this move gave me that opportunity and so far it's working out well. And what's it been like? Cause there was obviously COVID and stuff like that. The season was cut short and you had to come back home and stuff like that. So I suppose we won't... We won't dwell on the whole COVID situation, but kind of we'll just talk about this season. And how have you settled into life in Scotland, and what's it been like? You know, I don't know what the restrictions and stuff have been like there for you, and I imagine that's been hard to settle in anyway. But on the pitch, you're doing the business. Yeah, I was just gonna just getting going. Actually, I was only there here about two months, and then obviously lockdown kicked in. So um, yeah, I actually went home for the three months um, as our season ended up being finished. Um, so I think we were back in pre-season near the end of June. So um, I was just keeping ticking over back home, doing the 5K challenges and that. So um, I'm still doing them. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it was nice to get home for the three months and then obviously come back into pre-season ready to go. Um, I had a full pre-season under my belt, which is probably the first time I've had that in men's football every year. I've kind of picked up an injury in pre-season, so that was a big help for me and. Yeah, um, lockdown restrictions when I first came over, they were actually very lenient. Um, I remember all the pubs, bars been open, restaurants open, shops open. I couldn't believe it when I first came over and that only lasted maybe two or three months. And now I think everywhere is kind of locked down and um, only essential shops are open at the minute. But you kind of get used to it now after a year of kind of all this. So, um, yeah, it's just really get up in the morning, go to train and come back and um, do a food shop. And that's really me for the day. So, um, yeah, probably one of the benefits is my uh, my girlfriend. Um, she's actually working from over here. So it's a bit of company. Um, so, yeah, that's probably one of, the, one of the benefits of it. Yeah, when you spoke there, you obviously have your girlfriend there, but there is a pretty big Irish contingent there. you got Dylan Connolly, Joe Shocknessy, uh, Conor McCarthy as well from Cork. And obviously the manager, Jim Goodwin. So you do have a good core. I suppose if you're not with the girlfriend, I'm sure you'd be with the lads, the training or whatever that matches. So it kind of gives it that little bit of a home feel, I suppose, for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, when I moved over, Conor McCarthy signed near the same day as me. So um, we were in the hotel together for a few weeks. And that was, um, yeah, that was a great way to get to know him off the pitch. And um, we clicked straight away. And obviously I played with Dylan Connolly back home. And, we uh we won a good few trophies together, so it was nice to get Dylan back and um yeah, obviously Joe and Jake Doyle's as well. There's a there's a there's a good Irish contingent there and obviously the gaffer as well. So um yeah, it's like a home away from home, but um yeah, it's just a pity that we can't really do much with the restrictions or restrictions or that. So um I think we've only had one night out since we've uh, since we've got here. So um no, it's it's a it's a good dressing room good dressing room to be part of and there's no real clicks around it, and it's not like the Irish boys keep to themselves it's it's um it's a great group well I think with with Scottish people and you know even with English and Irish there is that level of banter especially in like a working environment or as you'd be in a football environment still a work environment in my opinion so you would still have that banter and I find there is a similar level of banter whereas if you're in say America or Canada or something they would get as much of the banter if you get me yeah, it's very similar to back home. Um, yeah, I think the boys are very similar. It's hard to understand them at times, but um, yeah, it's uh, it does the banter as we go in the dressing room. Um, yeah, it's very similar to back home, to be fair. 
Yeah, so it sounds like, you know, it's it's been kind of seamless slot in despite the fact, you know, there's not fans and stuff like that. But I I read stuff all the all the time online about you and stuff like that. And you seem to be a fan's favourite at St Mirren now, which is great as well. You've got the Irish lads there, the Irish manager and stuff like that. So it just seems as though life at the moment is, is going very well for you. No, I'm lucky, thank God, everything's going well. Um, I'm staying injured. Except for the black eye. Yeah, except for the black eye, but um, no, nah, I'm lucky everything's going well at the minute. Um, obviously, staying injury-free is the big one. Um, that's kind of what everyone kind of hopes for. So as long as that continues and um, we continue to play the way we're playing, um, yeah, I think it will be an enjoyable end to the season. Yeah, well, so far, and on my records, I'm going by transfer market. You've 31 appearances, nine goals and three assists. So you're going well. And you still, I don't know how many games you have left this season, but there's still a lot, I assume. Yeah, it's probably something I wasn't really known for at, uh, at Dundalk, was probably my goal scoring um, ability. But yeah, it's been something I've been working on. And I know a good few have been from the penalty spot. But um, yeah, I'm finding myself in probably more better areas to score goals and give myself a better opportunity and um, maybe not look for the pass all the time, maybe try and take more responsibility. So. Um, yeah, it's probably something I'm getting more into my game at the minute. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy the way it's going. Yeah, but you, you mentioned there about penalties and stuff like that as if as if it was a negative. I find a lot of people use, use the penalty score thing as a negative thing. Oh, well, you, always, you still have to step up to take the penalties. And if you miss the penalties, then you're off them. So the fact that you keep scoring them should be a positive in your, in you know on your side, in my opinion. Now, 100%. A goal is a goal at the end of the day so um whether it hits off my shin and goes in or scoring 30 yard it's still uh still a goal at the end of the day so um i'll take them as they come absolutely now you know there's two big games i want to talk to you about this season because obviously when you know you, you go to scotland you obviously think of the two big games that you want to play against or the two big teams that you want to play against no disrespect to saint mary in that regard but everyone yeah. talks in scotland about playing against rangers and celtic um, you beat Rangers in the Cup 3-2 and you got two goals. Did you get an assist that night for Conor McCarthy as well? Uh, I think the first header was saved by the keeper and then he scored the rebound, so I don't think it counted. Oh, OK. Well, you would have taken it if they had it given it to you. Yeah, anyway, I would have taken but... it. <laughs> um, but yeah, just on, just on that, so what was that like? I think that would have been the quarter-final of the Cup, if I'm right. Yeah, the quarter-final, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a special night. Um Probably the best night so far in a St. Mary's shirt. Um, it was, yeah, it was, the Rangers were unbeaten so far in the season and they didn't really look like slowing down. They've been doing brilliantly in Europe as well and they've only, they've only conceded a handful of goals all season. So, um, but we had belief going into the game. Um, I remember doing an interview before the game and maybe a few people laughed when I said that we have a chance and um, it showed on the night we went to goal down early on, but we bounced back with a, with a penalty just before half time and then um yeah we caught them on the counter then in the second half and last kick of the game they ended up scoring from a set piece so it was a bit of a kick in the teeth and then we went down the other end got a corner and scored from it so um now nah, it, was, it was an unbelievable night and the score too as well it was just extra special but um it would have been nice if the fans were there as well but um now nah, we take it yeah, because like you look at how well was that there was that Rangers only defeat this season. Yeah, that was their only defeat. So yeah, it was it was a big night. Yeah, so you should take massive credit in the fact that you you spent them that night, and I know you do, but um, I just think more people should give you more credit for for beating them. And then just recently this week, um, we won't talk about the Hibs game. We'll just talk about Celtic. Um, first time you beat Celtic, thirty years uh, at Celtic Park. And you're coming up against the likes of Shane Duffy, who's, I know when Seamus Coleman's not playing, Shane Duffy's the Ireland captain. Um, that's two massive scalps for you this season. What, what was it like against Celtic? I've seen you doing an interview after the game, saying that, you know, how you have the belief and stuff like that. So maybe if you, in your own words, kind of what the game was like and, and kind of how you felt. Yeah, we probably thought it was maybe a good time to, to catch them. Um, obviously, they haven't been flying and all cylinders as they have been for the last nine years so we've seen it as an opportunity um we had a game plan we matched them up in midfield we went man for man and um yeah i thought in the first half we played it was probably the best half of football we've played all year and thought we deservingly went in 
I'll be um, two on up, but I thought we should have been maybe more up. But um, now nah, we played some very nice football. Obviously, second half was going to be back to the wall job as Celtic start to pile on, pile on pressure. But um, I don't think our keeper had much to do on the night. We kept them at bay. I think our keeper only had two or three saves to make. So um, it wasn't a comfortable night, but certainly wasn't like playing the Celtic of old. Um, it was, it was, um, that was probably due to us though, because I thought we played some, some brilliant stuff. We were really brave on the ball and we passed the ball around. And I think our first goal was one of the best goals you'll see this year. We played out from the back and worked it all the way up. And yeah, it was a really well worked goal. So um, now fair play to the lads and it was a great effort. And um, yeah, it was certainly a great night. When you're coming up against the likes of teams in the old firm, is there, is there something on you where you are saying, right, well, these are the teams that are going to be mostly in the spotlight. We want to show that we can compete. Is that something that's in your mind frame going into those games? I know it probably is for every game, but you know what I mean. Yeah. No, well, that's, they're the games you want to play and you want to test yourself against the best. You want to see, can I match my man and can I get the better of him on the day? And um, that's the kind of mindset you have to go into these big games. You have to back yourself on the ball and try to get close to your opposition on the other side. So, um, personally, I love playing in the bigger games. Um, just it's a better, bigger test, and you have to try to stand up to it. Yeah, well, the reason I say that is because obviously Rangers are going so well in Europe and stuff like that as well. So, kind of take that into consideration. The fact that you're matching them when you play them, and that kind of brings me to my next point. Um, but do you think on current form that you might put yourself in the frame for the national team? Yeah, it's not really something I'm thinking of at the minute. Um, I'm just thinking about playing as much games as I can and hopefully adding a few more goals to uh, to that as well and see where that takes me. But um, yeah, at the minute, I'm just focusing on on finishing in the, in the top six if we can. Um, it's something the club has never done. So it's a, a real ambition of ours this year. So um, obviously, um, to play for Ireland would be incredible. And it's something everyone dreams of and that's why everybody plays the game. But um, yeah, it's not really my focus at the minute. I'm just focus on playing and trying to keep up my form and see what happens. Yeah, no, the reason I say it is because I look at someone like, say, Jack Byrne, who's similar position to yourself, and he was playing League of Ireland and he was playing so well that he earned himself a call up through playing in the League of Ireland. You were obviously playing in Scotland, so that's the reason why I say that. And obviously the fact that you have a relationship with Stephen Kenny being, you know, previously, he was previously your manager. Yeah, well, obviously Jack has ripped the league up. He was been the outstanding player there for the last two years so I think uh, he deserved his call up and um, similar to Aaron McInniff and um, obviously congrats to him he got hearts as well so um, no obviously Jack's Jack's done wonders in the league and um, and I think a few Dundalk boys are, have been unlucky as well not to get get a call up but um, no I'm just not really concentrating on that um, like I said I'm just focusing on playing and just enjoying my football at the minute. Well, I must say, in my own opinion, I think you should be in consideration at the very least. Uh, maybe if, even if you don't think, I think that you should be at least under consideration considering your form this season. You just mentioned there about Aaron McAniff and, um, you know, Jay's Caboya. A lot of players seem to be moving to Scotland now. It seems to be a popular thing, maybe a trend that you may have started. Yeah, might have been a trendsetter on that one, but nah, um yeah, obviously it came up against Jay's Kabaya there in the cup semi final. Um, he didn't get on, unfortunately, but it's great to see him get that move. Livingston are flying at the minute, so um, fair play to him. I hope he can break in. Um, I know he scored and that's so far, so it seems like he's had a great start there. And obviously, Aaron getting his, his move as well. Um, obviously, Hearts are in the championship at the minute, but they're a massive club and I'm sure they'll be up next year. So I'm looking forward to, to meeting him, hopefully. And just lastly, you spoke about St Mirren there. Uh, you may have given it away already, but what, what are your kind of hopes and aspirations for the rest of the season? Yeah, as I said, it's just, um, obviously it's an ambition to finish in the top six. Um, like I said, it's not it's something the club has never done. And um, Considering the size of the club, I think people might have wrote us off at the start of the year and, and I think we're proving people wrong. I think we've a lot of quality inside and we're doing it to 
the nice way we're playing good football we're playing out from the back every chance we can and um, obviously that suits players like myself and yeah so I just want to try and finish the season off as strong as I can personally um, get as many appearances under the belt as many starts as I can give myself the best opportunity to stay injury free and hopefully I could bag a few more goals and um, yeah hopefully just secure that top six but it's it's a long road ahead Um Every game in this league is very difficult, so um, it's very tight as well. So, yeah, it's it's going to be tough, but uh, something I'm relishing. Yeah, have you set yourself a tag of goals? And if you don't want to say it, that's totally fine. I know players like to keep it to themselves. Have you set maybe a target in your head? No, I haven't really. Um, yeah, I haven't really put that pressure on. I'm just going out playing, just enjoying it and... I don't want to get worked up on figures or that. Um, obviously, if I got one more, I'd be in double figures, which is which I'd love to get. So, um, but yeah, hopefully, I can get more than one for the rest of the year. Yeah, well, Jamie, I just want to say a huge thanks for joining me and having a catch up because, uh, as I say, it's been long overdue. Keep up the great form, and uh, hopefully, we'll have you on again soon before the end of the season, perhaps. No worries, Paul. Thanks for having me on.